All right, so I was out tonight and I uh, I scrapped a, a couple of things that I found. Uh, well, one main thing, it was a Sorval RC5B refrigerated super speed centrifuge. Now this thing was big and it was in a dumpster so I couldn't really access the whole thing and I kind of had to be quick about it. Uh, yeah, so I got what I could off of it. Uh, this was like, the main front panel and uh so i just took that whole thing off because it was easier than trying to just pick out the components i wanted in place so i just took the whole thing so yeah i got myself a a temperature temperature an analog temperature thing there and if we look at the back here it's connected with yeah Got my foot in there. It's connected with a like a 10 pin thing there. Let's see. Yeah, 11 pin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, 11 pins. Don't know what we need all 11 pins. And then it's also got two um, more wires on there. So I'm not sure what we need all those 11 pins for on a temperature on a temperature thing. I guess they're probably like uh, relay connections or something, I don't know. But anyways, um, we also have a, a revolutions per minute um, analog gauge. And uh, this is going up to 25,000 revolutions per minute, which is pretty crazy. And that's a pretty, so this centrifuge was uh, clocking at a pretty big, velocity rpm okay and uh let's see that's just, that's just got the two connections so that's a little bit more normal and uh in line with one of those connections we've got a, a pot that yonder is a pretty beefy pot there too so that's nice i could probably make use of that and then we've got uh, an angular velocity knob here uh, yeah it's just a pot that's another beefy pot there I'll make use of that and then we've got a, a timer it's just a timer you know 120 volt timer let's check it out so that doesn't have much value i'll probably just scrap that out i'm not gonna ever use that for anything i don't think or maybe i will i don't know yeah i'll keep that around i'll hang on to that one it's a uh, nice and beefy so and you can see it's a uh, operating just off of limit switches in there yeah that's kind of neat it's just limit switches so let's see if I can yeah see the limit switch action there limit switch limit switch yeah it's kind of cool okay and now um, now we just got some various uh, buttons there it's kind of nice Got a big ass switch here. Check that out. How's that for a switch? that switch is very very beefy and then what else do we have we've just got a big uh, a big contactor there uh, it's under the brand Furnas Furnas electric co 120 volts 30 amps which is nice so that's pretty beefy there 240 volt break all lines. Yeah. That's nice. Got a little bit of value there. And then we've got this, which I believe is just a an inductor. I don't think that it's a transformer. 
transformer. It might be a transformer, but uh, it could just be a big inductor as well. Not sure on that, but it's got some heavy gauge wires coming out of it, so that's going to be a, a nice whatever it is, transformer, inductor. Look at the size of that. Now that's a beefy inductor or transformer. I'll make use of that for sure. And we've got another one here. I dropped this one, so uh, I'm gonna have to test that out, make sure that I didn't damage anything, but you can see the big dent that I left in it. It's not good. And you can see the laminations are a little bit shifted because of that. But this one's a transformer for sure. You can, you can tell because it's got the different uh, size wires for the uh, for the different size coils. Yeah, so unfortunately it doesn't have a nameplate or anything like that, so I'm gonna have to do my own uh, uh, finagling to figure out what the voltages are on all these. Uh, I'll probably hook up. I'm guessing that these, since they've got uh, this connection on here, uh, actually, I'm not going to try to guess anything right now, but actually, yeah, I'll hazard a guess here. This is probably 120 volts going in here, and then you probably have a bunch of secondary voltages coming out here, like 12 volts, 24 volts for the various, uh, maybe a, yeah, 36 volts, maybe a 48 volts, who knows. But yeah, you can tell because uh, um, it all comes out on, on this side, and then you have the primary I'm guessing is primary on this side so oh but then make me a liar yeah you got some stuff coming out that side too so I don't know it's the type of thing where you just have to play around with it take some measurements you know I'll get to it and then what else do we have here oh we've got some uh, just a bunch of various uh, these are all the same three here they're uh, contactors solenoids there let's see here 120 volts AC
honestly, uh, if I att if I took that off there, took that nut off, I could. It's probably underneath there on the on the white piece of plastic is probably the branch. Uh, but uh, yeah, can you read that? Free. Whatever. But uh, yeah, if you look these up online, this is probably about seventy-five to a hundred dollars brand new. Believe it or not. Um, it's a hefty piece of equipment there. Uh, used like this, I'm going to guess that this is going to bring me about 50 bucks if I were to sell it. Um, I'm going to probably hang on to it because I don't have any of these in my, uh, in my parts uh, collection as of yet. So I was very happy to, to find this dangling off the back of the stuff. So yeah. Definitely hanging on to that one. And, uh, oh yeah, we've got a board here with uh, I forgot what they're called when they've got the, the row of uh, gold teeth on them like that but uh, regardless people like those because look at that now that's that's high quality gold plating on that if I've ever seen high quality gold that's high quality gold fingers on that for sure check that out for sure for sure for sure all day long that's, all day long that's some high quality plate all day long beautiful yeah. and uh, this board also has some some uh, this is an older board so it's got uh, a number of ICs on it that are gonna definitely have gold content I'm not interested in that type of thing but if you are one of those people that just scraps out this type of thing looking for gold uh, or gold containing components this is gonna be a uh, this is gonna be your bank for sure, man. Like, yeah, it's got all kinds that are, I'm guessing from the mid 1980s, 1990s maybe. Yeah, you can just tell that this is a high quality board and it's got high quality components. And you can see these, uh, these diodes up here, these four right up here. I'm guessing that's a bridge. Uh, full wave bridge rectifier or whatever <laughs> yeah and uh, those are those are big those are big diodes so those would be worth quite a bit of money just for the components themselves if I were to take them off and and that's probably what I'll do this board will probably end up getting up I'll desolder everything and and keep a uh, well, not everything. I'll desolder like any. I'll desolder these uh, these diodes. Maybe the big um, capacitor and uh, the relay there, and uh, a couple of these. Uh, I'm not sure what these are. These are probably voltage regulators. Let me see here. LM thirty four OT twelve. So yeah, that's uh, the one is. Uh, 7812 yeah so that this this the guy on the right there the guy on the right is a 12 volt uh, um, DC voltage regulator I can just tell because I've looked at so many different <laughs> circuit boards that you can tell now this guy here there's probably another voltage regulator here let me just see pop off the heat sink there 7812 yeah so that's a 12 volt voltage regulator as well uh, this guy, what do we got here? I'm not sure what that, oh yeah, look, MT1, MT2, gate. So that is, I'm guessing it's an SCR, maybe uh, maybe just a transistor, I'm not sure. But the gate is a get, dead giveaway, it's some sort of a switch. So, yeah, anything else interesting on here? Um, I'm sure there is. Yeah, we got a couple more down down here. MT1, MT2, gate. MT1, MT2, gate. Um, and, uh, yeah, these big capacitors here. Uh, 500 volts. Yeah, I like the high voltage capacitors because uh, there's some fun things you can do with high voltage capacitors. I like these, uh, 
these are potentiometers here. I like the style of them, um, the long potentiometers. So I might desolder those and just add those to my bin, parts bin, just uh, just because I like the just because I like the old design. You won't find those. The new design is kind of more like this box here. I'm not really a fan of those box shapes. Um, or uh, there's a there's a couple different designs, but to, you don't really see this too often on circuit boards anymore, just because it's, it's pretty big. But I like that, and I'm pretty sure these are tantalums. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that those are tantalums. Um, so if you're a tantalum fanboy, then there you go. Um, and these things with the the red LED on top, I'm not sure what that is. CR25. What does that mean? Not sure. Okay, so we got a tack fault. This board is very well labeled too. Very well labeled. And we got a rectifier there. Bridge rectifier. Ah, uh, da, da 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 da. Yeah. If you're a fan of any of these, these DS 204 or DS 2004CN, my bad. Um. Yeah. It's always interesting looking up what these types of ICs do because I mean it's very easy to desolder these and and uh, make use of them you know so like this one here CD 4050 BE um, that's probably like a uh, an IC used for uh, um, just a signal buffering or something like that so it probably takes like uh, um, a signal in one pin and then puts it out another pin inverted or something like that that's just my guess it probably does something like that like a lot of these things they just do something very basic some of them might be uh, yeah i'm not sure i'm not gonna hazard a guess now this one is interesting see it's got the sticker on it so this might be an eprom or something you know where you take that to sticker up and they might have a window underneath there that you can reprogram the thing but uh, either way, like you can uh, see how, yeah, I could I could pop that out, and uh, it's a replaceable one. You don't have to you don't have to desolder it. You can just pop it out and replace it, or pop it out, reprogram it, whatever. You know, it's a high quality switch. I like that switch. I'll be taking that switch for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. All right. Oh, and the LM series, LM723. Yeah, very uh, very classic. Uh, uh, logic uh logic ICs so could be like an and or a or a an you know, or and or xor xand nor you know those types of things it's probably something like that logic you know logic logic ic logic gates learned that about learned about that in college uh, and that was distant memories all right so that's enough for this board all right um yeah so uh there's uh there's some other parts on that uh on that machine that i might go back for i'm not sure oh i didn't i didn't uh, show you this is the plug for it so it is quite the beefy centrifuge um if i could i'd like to get to the motor because i'm sure it's got a wonderful motor on there um and i'm sure that this this board is uh, for controlling that motor um, I'm sure that uh, if I could get to that motor, I'm sure that I would love to see that motor because I'm sure that it's worth a pretty penny, probably like a thousand bucks or something. I would never see that type of money from it, but I mean, I still like to have, have motors that are worth a lot of money just to say, look at this, this is worth four grand. Yeah. Anyways, okay, that's it for now. I just wanted to add in where uh, this board might have uh, potentially failed and it might have been why they scrapped this entire thing. And if you look right up here, it's a resistor that is definitely being cooked. Or been cooking for quite some time. Either way, uh, it's not looking too hot. Uh, maybe it's a looking a little bit too hot. Ha ha ha, hilarious. Anyways, yeah. Not necessarily uh, the reason why this stopped working, but uh, like I said, definitely not looking good. Sizzle, 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 sizzle. Sure, that didn't smell too good. So yeah, um, that's one thing that I want to point out. When you have a circuit board that's not working properly, 
Um, your best bet is that to, uh, just to give the board a, uh, a physical once over. Look at all the components, see if there's any obvious signs like that because most of the time there is something obviously burnt like that or like a capacitor that's blown up or something like that. You know, most of the time it's something obvious. You can see it, you can smell it. Um, yeah, so it's something that's uh, not looking right, you know, it's something that's gone burnt up. And, uh, you know, when I'm diagnosing uh, boards that aren't working, or boards that stopped working, or appliances that stopped working for whatever reason, that's the first thing I do, is I give the board a once over, because nine times out of ten, the board's not working properly, I find something like that. Or it's a relay that stopped working, the contacts are stuck or something like that. A lot of times, contacts on the relay is what goes, and uh, if it's not that, then it's something that you can see, like a burnt out resistor or a burnt out trace. Alright, that's it, just wanted to add that, because I saw it. <laughs> Alright. Easy.